I want to go, I want to go over there. I want to get some food to eat. That'll be flipping brilliant. I can't wait for that. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to have a good time. I can't really wait. Like there's loads of clubs I want to visit too that I haven't had the chance to check out. One of them being RSO Club or RSO Berlin, which was former, which was formerly known as the River Rivier Sudust, which was formerly known as Griesmüller. And this was a legendary club in Berlin, like one of the best ones. It had like this real, it kind of like was a, a grown-up version of like Sisyphos or something, right? You know, Sisyphos is like, it's a little bit of a adult playground sort of vibe, right? There's like little huts and little rooms and different venues and everyone looks like they've been, you know, taking way too many hallucinogens. But I thought um, Grease Mueller was like an adult version of it because it still had the adventure part of it where you could go out and play on the climbing frame. You could sit in those massive drums. You could sit on the couches outdoors. I remember once actually being outside of Grease Mueller one year and just sitting on the couches outside, um, bugging, absolutely my eyes rolling in the back of my skull, just like, you know, off a of flipping MDMA and stuff. And this random girl just sitting next to me and we we're both buzzing. We we're just like holding hands. Nothing sexual, nothing romantic, nothing. Just kind of enjoying the moment and just talking about, you know, how we were felt, feeling and stuff for hours. I remember it. And then we just kind of left each other, shook hands and kept it moving. And, I, and I've always really appreciated that sort of stuff. I kind of, I kind of slipped up a few times here and there in terms of trying to continue the fun with people that you meet abroad, especially when I go on my little, you know, techno tourism trips. But I really do like the odd kind of like oh we're best friends like on this trip and then we don't see each other again i think there's something really magical about that um something really cool and really in the moment where you just kind of enjoy each other's company right in that instant and you don't do anything else i remember once when i went to Berghain ages ago i forgot when this was maybe a four years ago maybe i met up with some guys from the berlin social club um subreddit there's like a subreddit where if you want to go clubbing and you want to meet up with people, you don't want to go on your own. There's lots of people that kind of meet up and do that kind of stuff. Obviously, I go on my own all the time, but it was just nice to kind of mix it up one time and we met each other all inside and, you know, everyone that kind of messaged basically ended up getting indoors and it was kind of sick to kind of just have that, you know, first the first interaction you're having with someone that you don't know is in a nightclub. But then because you're all there alone, you're kind of codependent, but you don't want to look like you're codependent. So this weird little game you're playing and then, you know, in a group of people, you'll find your core that you like, two or three, four, whatever it may be. And you just can't, you just kind of, you know, latch onto them and just you know, do your thing. And it was so good, man. Honestly, I really, 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 really loved it. I'm not going to lie. That was really a good experience. So I'm really looking forward to doing that and just kind of walking around. And another thing too I'm going to do, which I don't usually do when I go. I never usually upload pictures. I think the last couple of times I've been there, I've maybe uploaded a picture of myself queuing outside the Bergheim or something. Just a classic kind of picture to kind of, you know, get the timeline pumping and get some likes on my account and boost that little engagement because I hardly use my Instagram, especially the main feed. But this time around, I'm going to take my film camera because I've bought some really cool Ilford film that I've been using lately, actually. Yeah, I've got one here. No, no, I don't have it here. But this is a Fuji. But I've got some really good Ilford film that I've been using with my cameras when I go out and stuff and when I go on my travel. So I'm going to take that with me too and take some really, really nice pictures. But that's kind of the vibe that I'm, I'm actually on when I go there. So there'll be a, probably a, some gallery hop in here and there. Uh, maybe I land on the weekend. I'm not sure how it's going, how it's going, to, how it's going to vibe. And then of course, loads of restaurants, loads of clubs, and then kind of enjoy myself and go from there. And I'm also doing the real grown-up thing, which I never usually do. I'm actually going to book an, a hotel because I've actually, you know, I'm okay in terms of booking a hotel now because I've saved some money. So I'm going to actually book a hotel. So that's going to be absolutely cool, isn't it? Um, usually I'm always staying in, you know, Airbnbs and hostels and just, you know, really kind of uh, fugging it out. But I just can't do that vibe anymore. I'm too old for that sort of stuff. It's not usually my vibe. And I'd like to have my own space. And I also hate, one of the main things I kind of hate about Airbnbs, which is something I kind of have kept an eye on now when I book them. I always try and book with like super host or like places where you see it's like a self-checking kind of thing. The annoying thing is always the key exchange, I feel like, especially in places like Berlin. Or, um, you know, people are just living their lives and doing their thing and then here you come wanting to stay in their place and they have to, you know, make the adjustments to meet you and then you're not sure what time you land and what time you're going to get there. It's just annoying. Um, so it's always a bit fiddly. 
the recent times I've been there, there've been some good ones where they just tell you to pick up the keys at like a local um Spetty, whatever, right? Spetty, however they call the little bodegas they have there. That's been pretty cool. But when you have to meet the person, it's just annoying. So, but then obviously on the flip side of it, um, hotels you can only check in after four p.m. So if you get that early flight that I always get, that six a.m. flight because you want to spend the day and use the day, you know, you don't you don't get there and you can't really use the day because you're tired. But um, but the hotel thing might be good anyway in general because I'll be able to leave my luggage in the hotel hopefully holding thing, come back at four when the room's ready and go for a walk, have some have something to drink, you know, take some pictures and stuff and just enjoy myself. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to. It. I'm not going to lie because that might be my only big trip this year or trip trip. I'm thinking of going again in July, but I think that might be it. And then of course I've got Houghton coming up in August in terms of the festivals, and then before that we're going to see um Dixon play at Toft Manor. But there's not really much else going on for me in terms of trips and holidays. This has really been a, a year of like saving and really hustling and whatnot. So, yeah, let's see how that goes, man. Let's see how that goes. Actually, you know what? Let me quickly, I, I didn't even double check this actually. What's actually happening in RSO? Because I, I really want to go to this place. So I'm, I'm sure you guys, I've mentioned already, right? RSO Berlin. It's, it's now, you know, basically the, the formerly known Grease Mueller Club had a short time where it was called River Sudas, which I, I guess is their outdoor thing that they have going on, which is now the home to like markets and beer gardens and stuff. But now they've changed, you know, basically RSO Club is basically where all the actual club events happen. RSO Berlin, so RSO Club. Um, and I don't even know what it looks like on the inside. This is one of the benefits of going clubbing in Berlin in general. They take clubbing so seriously that most clubs don't allow you to take pictures under the premise that, you know, to protect the anonymity of the people that go inside the clubs. I would assume that probably comes from the LGBTQ queer scene more so, the whole no pictures. So people could get up to what they get up to, especially back in the day when maybe, you know, being out wasn't the most easiest thing for most guys to do or people from that scene, queer, LGBT. So if you put a stick on someone's phone and you tell people no photos allowed, people could go in there and let, let their hair down and actually be free and be themselves for once, even if it's only for a short period of time, they could have that space in that arena to do what they need to do. Obviously over time, it's now morphed into a different thing because I guess the more popular nightlife has become and clubbing has become people have just taken the piss when it comes to clubs in it in terms of the experience and documenting it people having a flash on all the time recording every single thing that they're doing some people even you go to clubs and they're legitimately watching the dj perform through the screen of their phone they're in the club and they're watching it through the screen of their phone instead of actually you know just recording and holding it to the side and actually enjoying the thing with your eyes they're absorbing the whole environment everything through the screen of a phone which is absolutely bizarre but people do what they want to do but that for sure does affect the vibe of the club and you only have to check out clips from like Circo Loco you know they have great lineups for DJs again if, you, if you're not a fan of Tech House it's one thing but you can't deny that there's very proficient high level very famous very well known um, industry vet kind of people on those lineups but the party just looks horrible. Number one, it's full of dudes. And number two, they're all holding up their phones, trying to record the drop. It just takes away from the event, takes away from the party, takes away from the vibe. And there's really minimal, minimal dancing. The most dancing you see is people on the stage twirling their hands in the air. So that's, what, that's one of the great things about going to Berlin is that it's a real awakening. It's a real refresher. It's a real education in terms of like how you're meant to club, how you're meant to party. People actually you know i'd imagine that's probably what people like david mancusa was trying to do back in the day right um what probably the early days of studio 54 must have been like arena all these places tunnel people actually go in to listen to music to dance and that's what you get when you go to these kind of places you actually get a vibe that people are actually care about the scene they care about the music they care about the dj and they want to let their hair down and have a boogie and i love it and obviously there's some places that you go to where they just got great chill out areas you can just go and relax and just post up and just listen to the person play pull out your phone and shazam all the tracks that they have and you know do your whole trin stroking thing but for the most part everyone's on it like everyone's on it like everyone's going 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 so that's what something i'm really looking forward to so but then again, going back to the whole not pictures thing, the annoying thing about it is that you have nothing, you have no idea what to expect when you go into the nightclub. So usually most places, you know, for them, for the most part, even if you go into a restaurant, a flipping post office, whatever, you know what it looks like. <laughs> Whereas this, we have no idea what it looks like on the inside. Zero. I don't know where the booth is, I don't know what colour the walls are. You know what I mean? Zero. What, what the toilets look like. Absolutely zero about the club. The bar, nothing. 
So he's going to go into completely blind and see what the vibe is like. Um, but yeah, so far, you know, from what I've seen online, the lineups look pretty decent. The weekend that I'm going to be there, there's going to be a party. There's a party all over the weekend, actually, which is great because this also coincides with the same weekend that there's going to be the Sylvester um, at the flipping uh, at Bergheim, which I still don't understand. I don't understand because the Sylvester, if I'm not mistaken, is the New Year's Eve party they were meant to have in like 2021, but obviously the pandemic, or 2020 or something, right? I think 22 or 21. Obviously, the pandemic kind of um, scuppered those plans, and now they're doing it randomly in June. I don't get why you're making up a New Year's Eve day on June, but I guess maybe it might be because they just want to get some extra money in the tills. Maybe. I'm not too sure, but that's an interesting thing. But anyway, in RSO Berlin, there's going to be a club and event called Gegen Chaos happening there. I don't really know who's playing too tough on the list here. Who do I recognize? I recognize FKA M4A. This person I recognize primarily because of um, the radio station called Hor H O. Whatever is it? Hor. How do you pronounce that radio station? Which has been a real godsend, I think, for the Berlin community. As as horrible as it must have been to live in a pandemic in a city like that, because essentially, it you know, without clubs, what's the point of living in Berlin for the most part? Well, from my from my point POV, so you can only imagine what it's like for somebody that's actually you know an artist and trying to find their way in there and doing it or actually just move there because they wanted to progress in their career and then suddenly you can't do the one thing that brought you there it must be horrible but i think that station hall did a really good job in terms of showcasing great local talent and i think one of the persons that kind of stood out to me was this guy fka.m4a really cool disco-y um indie dance just vibey sort of sets i really recommend checking out oh he's gonna be in london actually for the flesh queer festival that's awesome maybe i might have to pop in for that one actually but yeah that should be cool so i see a recognize name recognized on that list um again another good thing for them which they do i like about their programming a lot of the people i don't recognize i recognize this name um kissy but i don't recognize any of the other djs of course mike star too i recognize again from whore that's about it but i like the fact that they they try and book like local acts from from what it sounds like that flyer is gnarly um which is absolutely great then going out and booking the same old tired people that do all the same old raves all over europe it just gets a little bit boring after a while so that's great to see what else have they've got there let me scroll down they've got another party called x form on the saturday with surgeon and stephanie sykes which is going to be six stephanie sykes is a uk person who i think lives over there um, so that should be pretty decent and then you've got another event on the sunday called technozoid is it called technozid technozid sorry old school house open air and techno indoor ray which sounds like a pretty good deal to be honest and um yeah it should be pretty popping i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna have to probably pick one or the other but i really do want to go just so i can see the inside that's all i want to do interesting you could buy tickets in, in advance in it and still get rejected that's a thing that's harsh though the door entry thing in berlin's hot, you know notoriously flipping harsh hard to hard to kind of read and to kind of guess um you know we've all heard the stories of how hard it is to get into Bergheim, but sometimes clubs there will allow you to buy tickets in advance but they will also remain they also have the right to basically deny you on the door if they don't think your vibe is great do you know what i mean which is absolutely mad so um yeah let's see what they're gonna say let's see what they're gonna say but i'm really eager to see what it's like on the inside i really really am let's see what the google they get up on here yeah, i have google reviews what they say here from what i've checked out because sometimes a good little hack again for those of you who don't who go out a lot and you want to check out places and you want to see what they're like sometimes google reviews are a good place to check out because a lot of normies live leave reviews on here and it's a good gauge to see where you might land because sometimes it'll be really over enthusiastic you know reviews of five stars and then like this one super super like one star reviews about like, this is the worst place ever and you kind of have to you know figure it out in your head as to where you land in it and i think maybe you know the 3.2 kind of illustrates that it's somewhere in the middle this person obviously the one says don't let uh do not let inside after buying tickets in advance and then refuse to refund money though they say otherwise at the door oh sick that's that that hurts Another person says, um, the pizza is super delicious. Oh, they serve food there, okay. And the staff are cool. Um, one, one hour and 30 minutes in line having tickets. This is unbelievable. So the, the wait is probably long. Everyone keeps saying that. Love it. Okay, one negative thing. You are not allowed to bring in food and there is nothing proper to buy inside either. Okay, cool. Because from, from what I know about Bergheim, which I haven't done myself, but you can bring in food. Like people bring in Tupperwares and stuff. But usually whenever I've got hungry, I've just popped out and nipped over to the little place that serves curry warts and stuff with chips and shit and got something there. 
that's been usually my go-to but i've heard people bring in burgers and whatnot and peanuts and bananas and sandwiches um, another one says peak berlin techno in an industrial space another one says big club good sound system a lot of different details that make you have, that make that make you have a great and safe party they sell closed bottle water toilet availability is good oh okay cool because i guess in some clubs they don't let you they don't they don't give you a bottle of water closed they always take the lid off the idea around that is probably so you don't chuck the lid at people right is that ring I don't really know what the idea or, or maybe it makes you buy more water because you can't hold it forever you have to drink it maybe i don't know but that's a re but it's good to see that they so you close ones two scenes so two rooms and plus one outdoor a lot of space to chill cool so it sounds like a very roomy place to go they throw me out for no reason after standing in the queue for two hours with tickets already bought i thought, I thought berlin was really racism this i don't believe people always say stuff like this i was just in the queue standing and they just chucked me out so they, they just pointed you out and said you go there's probably more context that we don't know about, but uh, big up Julio Nunes non um, nonetheless. Well, a lot of people seem to agree with this person. Seven upvotes in that comment. So maybe this is a thing that they do a lot there in the queue. It's not really too sure. Another one says, we got tickets to advance. We're standing in the queue by 11 and 4, and we are still not close to getting in. Super bad organization. Stay away if you can. Okay. So it looks like a place you have to go either really early or really late if you want to get in because it looks like a busy place and everyone goes and then it gets oversubscribed and then they end up doing what most clubs do and not really managing the situation after the fact but yeah i'm looking forward to it regardless i'm looking forward 